Hello everyone. Sorry that it's been so long since my last video. I've been going through a lot of big transitions lately, and I'll probably be going through a lot of big transitions in the near future as well. Between me being busy with all of these changes, and all of the work that I'm doing at college, I decided that I should probably create some means of staying in touch with you, just so that in the future you'll know things like when a new video is coming, how far along I am in making it, and if there are any delays, and so on and so forth. The channel's still going on, don't worry. And if all goes well, there should be some more exciting new content very soon. If you like historical dramas, stories that take place in a more beautiful, simple, romantic, and exciting time, full of passionate love affairs, glorious battles, quiet drama, and upper-class intrigue, then you will most likely hate Barry Lyndon, because even though it has all of those ingredients, it uses an entirely different recipe resulting in an entirely different experience than the kind you would get in similar films. Refusing to provide us with a straightforward narrative, a likable main character, or any kind of emotionally satisfying conclusion, Barry Lyndon instead gives us a soul-crushing human tragedy, with an almost robotic hero, and a story that moves at a snail's pace for three hours, keeping a cold clinical distance from all of the action that takes place. This doesn't necessarily make for a better film, in my opinion. In fact, these elements in the hands of anyone less than an artistic genius would typically result in a pretentious and melodramatic mess. Yet, in the hands of the greatest of directors, Stanley Kubrick, Barry Lyndon becomes a powerful reflection on human existence, and one of the greatest films of all time. Barry Lyndon is the story of one man's quest for personal happiness, and his inability to achieve it kind of like an 18th century Bojack Horseman, minus the comic relief. Throughout the film, Barry pursues wealth, romance, and status, and yet, despite achieving all of these things, happiness evades him. Not only is he dissatisfied with his good fortune, he also finds that each blessing that comes into his life brings an assortment of small curses with it. Wealth, romance, and status all come with responsibilities, responsibilities which the story's anti-hero is not equipped to handle. For me, this narrative brings to mind the work of medieval philosopher Boethius, who, in his book The Consolation of Philosophy, illustrates that everything that the world considers to provide happiness, such as wealth, power, and honor, only bring with them more potential for unhappiness. The moment that you gain wealth, you have to face the difficult task of keeping it. Honor and power are dependent on the approval of other people, which is fleeting and subject to change. Barry was one of those born clever enough at gaining a fortune, but incapable of keeping one. Now he was burdened with the harassing cares and responsibilities, which are the dismal adjuncts of great rank and property. All these things only bind people in different kinds of chains, as Barry Lyndon shows by having its hero move from the prisons of poverty and war to the much more cleverly disguised prison of aristocracy. At the end of his argument, Boethius claims that the true source of happiness is virtue, which makes sense in Barry Lyndon, considering that virtue is the only thing that its main character is most evidently lacking in. You're a gallant soldier, and have evidently come of good stock. But you're idle, dissolute, and unprincipled. You've done a great deal of harm to the men. And for all your talents and bravery, I'm sure you will come to no good. However, though it's not wrong to see Barry Lyndon as a kind of cautionary morality tale for how not to achieve happiness in life, I feel there are deeper layers beyond that which are worth examining. For instance, one of the other main things which struck me when I first watched Barry Lyndon was its similarities to Kubrick's other films. One of my friends once joked that he legitimately believed that Stanley Kubrick's movies were so devoid of emotion that the man had to be an automaton. And to some extent, I feel this is true. Reading interviews of Kubrick on his work, it's clear that the man experienced emotion differently than most people, perhaps on a more subtle level, as it always seemed he was more a creature of intellect than anything else. It makes sense then that the one time that he attempted to write a Spielberg-style accessible family film, he wrote a story about a robot who wants to become human. Perhaps this is how Kubrick saw himself in some way, struggling to understand the distinctions and dynamics between the human and the robotic, between reason and emotion. Note how the robot HAL 9000 is the most sympathetic character in 2001 A Space Odyssey, or how A Clockwork Orange describes Alex's loss of free will in terms of the mechanical and the organic, hence the clockwork and orange of the title. When I watch Barry Lyndon, what I see in the film's central character is a man conflicted 
about how to deal with his own emotions. When we first meet Barry, he is so stiff, his passions are so repressed, that even after having been invited into physical intimacy by his love interest, she still has to guide his hand to the right place. Unlike Thackeray's description of Barry as a scheming rogue actively chasing his betterment, Kubrick's version depicts the character as an inert subject to whom things happen, writes Brian Eggert of Deep Focus Review. This scene sets up Barry as a passive character, whose main role in the story is to react to the world around him. The first time Barry does act on his emotions, it gets him into a ridiculous amount of trouble and misfortune. This turn of events, along with the society that he lives in, causes him to repress his emotions even more, which gets him into trouble later when he is emotionally unavailable to his wife. Redmond, would you mind not smoking for a while? Redmond? This upsets Barry's stepson, who serves as a passionate foil to Barry's cold opportunism, and who challenges Barry to feel, which only results in ruin when Barry's repressed emotions burst forth in a moment of uncontrollable anger. The emotional distance that defines the film's central character extends to the film itself, which uses wide shots to dwarf the characters, making them seem insignificant in the hands of fate. The film is consciously a museum piece, writes Tim Roby of Telegraph, its characters pinned to the frame like butterflies. Let's not forget the film's epilogue, a final shattering blow pushing the characters even further away from us, suggesting that we adopt a fatalistic and possibly nihilistic stance to what we've just seen. Watching characters that you're supposed to feel distant from is exhausting, however, but the film solves this problem by using length to its advantage. Some people may have difficulty with its length, over three hours and every minute necessary, and its deliberate pacing, which I find luxurious, like sinking into a fine long book. They make the film a rigorous experience unless you give yourself up to the director's method. Mr. Kubrick takes his own sweet time as he looks, examines, comments, and chants the eye frequently, but always remains a little distant. Instead of simply prolonging this distance, the film uses time to decrease that distance, wearing down on the audience so we become more and more vulnerable as the narrative plunges from cool and collected charm into a spiral of bitterness, grief, vengeance, and hysteria. What is now apparent is that the slow burn approach allows emotion to reach us in acidic drops rather than obliterating waves. If nothing else, though, Barry Lyndon is a gorgeous film, brilliant in both its impeccable mimicry of the art and fashion of the time period it portrays, and in its technical innovations, as Kubrick went to great lengths to film in natural lighting, requiring him to borrow a special lens from NASA which would allow him to use the movie's many candlelit scenes. It is a film which is all about happiness, though none of its characters can be said to have truly achieved it, just as it is a film all about emotion, though it has very little of that either. But like many brilliant films, it both invites and resists interpretation as to what exactly it says on these subjects. I've tried to parse things out as best I can, but I really do think a part of what makes Barry Lyndon so great is that it asks all of the right questions about why Barry Lyndon goes through such great lengths to achieve what will never satisfy him, and why we find ourselves making the same mistakes in our own time, in our own lives. And in that respect, I think the answers are largely up to us. <laughs>